Sibo here. Right now, we're at the Tennessee Williams Museum in Key West. So he's one of America's greatest playwrights. He wrote famous plays like The Glass Menagerie, A Streetcar Named Desire, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and a lot of those they made wonderful movies of. So his um, art artistry is very, very impactful. You know, it dealt with a lot of issues of infidelity and things like that. So he lived actually in Key West from 1941 until his death in 1983. So we're going to take a, sh a look into the museum to, to see some of the things that, uh, that are memorabilia of Tennessee Williams. This is 17. This one is. What stop is this? A glass menagerie. Um, Starring. Yes. The greatest living playwright in the Western world. Oh, he was amazing. The Night of the Iguana. He did the Night of the Iguana. That was, remember, we went to that. So right now we have a playbill. As I said, a lot of his, you know, films, I mean his plays were made into films. So we hear The Glass Menagerie, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. That was uh, a movie, they made a movie out of that. And um, Elizabeth Taylor started it. That was one of her seminal roles. And then Night of the Iguana, also Elizabeth Taylor and uh, Wow, so we went to the place where they filmed that in Puerto Vallarta. So that was filmed in Puerto yes. Vallarta. Yeah. The milk train doesn't stop here anymore. Wow. Orpheus descending. I guess it's on this side. So that's two. Poetry number two. So this is number one. So this is a display of cabinet. This is a collection of photographs. And the success of his first Broadway play, The Glass Menagerie, in the mid 1940s, launched his career and helped make him a highly acclaimed international playwright that he is today. Champagne glasses, oh my. Claire Bloom and Tennessee William. Anna Mignani. Jessica Tandy. Okay. Jessica Tandy, Frank Merlo, Elia Kazan. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. Helen Hayes, the great Helen Hayes. Rudolf Nureyev, the great ballet dancer. Catherine Hepburn, fantastic actress. So these are his associates. Wow, amazing. Is that Judy Garland? Okay, the second one is the poet. The college yearbook poem was the beginning of a lifetime of writing that resulted in Tennessee being often identified as one of the greatest playwrights of the last century. So these are the poets, poems that he wrote. Wow. 
This is number three, the awards wall. Here is a sample of some of the major awards given to Tennessee for his contributions as a writer through the years. They included the Tony, two Pulitzers, and the highest honor that had been given to any American civilian, the Presidential Medal of Freedom given to him by President Carter in 1980. When I place, and these are the plays that he did. Okay, number four. I want to get some of his scripts. Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. In the bar of a Tokyo Hotel. Number eight. The Rose Tattoo. The Rose Tattoo play won the Tony for the best Broadway play in 1951, and Maureen Stapleton and Eli Wallach each won a Tony for best acting. Here we have on the wall a Tennessee Williams signed playbill. Tennessee's writing of the play, the screenplay, and the filming of the Rose Tattoo in Key West in the mid-50s is considered the most important gift from him in Key to Key West. The film had its Key West premiere at the San Carlos Institute on Duval Street in January 1956. The original stairway used in the film can be seen outside the window on the far right. The milk train doesn't stop here anymore. I had three sad things. Fine Arts Center, number 12. Signed first editions, wrist 10. Signed playbills. So these are signed first edition playbills? Yes, books? and books, just signed first editions. Whether they be books, or these are books. The World of Tennessee Williams. British Playbills. This collection further confirms the popularity of Tennessee's plays internationally. He was very popular here, but he was also popular internationally. So these are all playbills. Wow. Summer and Smoke. Sweet. Bird of your but at the New Theater London 1959. That's awesome. Wow. And number 12, Tennessee Williams Fine Arts Center. Leading, lending his name to the Tennessee Williams Fine Arts Center, presently called Tennessee Williams Theater, is the second most important thing that Tennessee did for Key West. He was here for the groundbreaking ceremony and the dedication. He also wrote a special play for the opening of the center. Presented here are the original poster, program, and playbill for the play. A postage stamp. And here are more first editions. Send that to Gigi. <laughs> nice. Hit a gazebo here. Fourteen thirty one. Here, Marconi, here's a chair. These are very Philippine like chairs, too. Never that chair. 
little horse. Here, Mark. Okay. Did you see number 15? Yes. They were 14 years together. Here are the paintings by Tennessee Williams. On this day, on this wall, we have copies of paintings done by Tennessee while living in Key West. He loved to paint for relaxation, not for critics or for sale. Originals can be seen on display at the Custom House Museum. Yeah, Frank Merlot was Tennessee's partner for 14 years, and they spent much of their time together in Key West. Unfortunately, Frank died of lung cancer in 1963. Following his death, Tennessee went into a slump and felt that he was not as productive as he should have been. He called it his stoned age because of his heavy dependence on prescription drugs and alcohol. It says in 1947, Tennessee Williams met and fell in love with Frank Merlo, a second generation Sicilian American who had served in the US Navy during World War II. Merlo proved to be a calming influence on Tennessee and it was during this period that the playwright produced some of his greatest works. Then in 1963, Merlo died of lung cancer and Williams fell into a deep depression that would persist for nearly a decade. painting but look at this look at his house here So actually look here, there's a beautiful gazebo, a lovely garden and patio area. Inside you can see the kitchen that was modern for that time. And a really pleasant, you know, dining room and living room. God, I could live there so easily. And I guess this was a place where he would like uh, do his writing, which he called the madhouse. <laughs> What a prolific writer. Rose Williams and Husband. In her late teens, Rose became mentally unstable. After spending two years in and out of mental institutions and not getting any better, Tennessee's mother and brother made the decision without Tennessee's knowledge to have her lobotomized in 1938 at the age of 21. Much later, when Tennessee was well established in Key West, he bought a house here for Rose, where she lived with caregivers for three years. Later, she was moved back to a care facility in upstate New York, where she died in 1996. The historic property is now privately owned and not accessible to the public. Tennessee died in New York City at the age of 71 in 1983. At the time, there were many theories about how he died. His brother believed that he had been murdered. Many newspaper articles claimed that he choked to death, overdosed on drugs, or that he committed suicide. Two years later, it was officially concluded that he died of an accidental overdose of sleeping pills. Very, very impressive. I learned a lot more about Tennessee Williams. And that's why it's good to come to these places because Tennessee Williams is one of 
the best playwrights, you know, of the 20th century, American playwright, and wrote some really iconic plays. And to see his life and how he developed and, you know, the love that he had for his partner, they were together for 14 years, is very touching. And how he was inspired by that love to write some of the best plays that we know today. Yes. Check it out. Yes. It's right here. Williams.